Almost Live looks back at Blizzard 96. Many Seattleites see snow and pull everything out of the closet with disastrous results. Uh-oh. Better wait for the spring thaw. <laughs> Meanwhile, Seattle Art Institute students struggle to keep white stuff off their ultra-hip black clothes. <laughs> With I-90 blocked, Mercer Island residents find alternate routes across Lake Washington. They'll do anything to avoid coming in through Renton. <laughs> the work day begins. Man, it took me two hours to get in. God, I was behind a bus at Jack Knight. It's just, right? It's horrible. Well, there was like six inches of ice on I-5. Is that right? It's oh, terrible out there. It's going to be a heck of a drive home. Yeah, what time yeah. do you have? 11.30. You better get started. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. See ya. The work day ends. Uh-oh, someone's stranded in the snow. But don't worry, help is on the way from man's best friend. That's right, fresh espresso. Rover, you're a saint. But next time, go easier on the phone. And with snow in the city, skiers don't need to go to the mountains. Now that's rapid transit. This has been a look back at Blizzard 96. Everybody's still excited. How, how about that Apple Cup? Did you watch that? You watch that? Very exciting. Overtime excitement. Yes, the Huskies, they used a, a very interesting strategy. Got into the huddle and said, let's give up 21 points in the fourth quarter and see what happens. Okay, great. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, lot of, yeah, ooh, boy, a lot of tradition in the Apple Cup. If the Huskies had lost the... Uh, the president of the UW would have given the WSU president the traditional gift of smoked salmon. Uh, but because WSU lost, they presented their traditional gift, returning all the stuff they stole in Seattle last year. <laughs> Which was nice. Uh, very big day for Husky player Corey Dillon. Uh, you probably saw this. Even though he was injured in the game, he tied the record set in 1968 by O.J. Simpson for touchdowns scored in a season. Isn't that it's amazing? 22 touchdowns. <laughs> And I think that that's really great, but let's, let's hope that's the only one of O.J.'s records that, you know, <laughs> that he ties. There. Yeah, so, like, keep it at that. There was, of course, the, the big snow of 96 this week. And every, everybody tries, they, they try to outdo everybody else with how bad the snow is in their neighborhood. And I have to admit, I cheated a little bit because I, I, I shoveled a bunch of snow on the top of my car. You know, because it's like, you know, how everybody's comparing the snow in the parking lot. And I'm like, yeah, we got three feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at my car. And uh, you probably saw in the news that someone was injured after jumping off the Space Needle. <laughs> yeah, which just goes to show you the lengths that some people will go to avoid having to exit through the Space Needle souvenir shop. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> over there. Of course, this was all uh, staged by the tabloid TV show American Journal, which I, I think it's pretty disgusting that people would take money from some sleazy tabloid show and actually endanger themselves by jumping off some big building. Or uh, hey, some John, sorry to interrupt, but this fact just came in for you from a current affair. So I thought you should see it. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Uh, look, I'll be right back. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Good 
Good luck, man. Okay. Hey kids, it's time once again for Uncle Fran's Musical Forest. Hi kids, I'm Uncle Fran. I'm a little ticked off, and sometimes I get mad, but I will always be your friend. Hi kids, it's almost Thanksgiving, and that means it's time for Uncle Fran's annual list of things to be thankful for. Sing along. I'm thankful for sunshine, blue skies, and that a woman can't literally reach through your chest cavity and rip out your heart. Uh, yeah, she can only do it metaphorically. <laughs> Say, Mr. Raccoon, what are you thankful for? Uh, I'm thankful for turkey, dressing, big red hickeys, potatoes and gravy, mixed meat <laughs> wine. What? It sounded like you said you're thankful for big red hickeys. <laughs> no, I didn't. I said, um, big red, um, cranberries. Big red cranberries. Uh, what's that on your neck there? <laughs> There's nothing on my neck. Not your neck. Your neck. There's Come that here. one. There's that one. Oh, Fran, it's a rash, okay? My woman gave you a hoodie. No, she did not. Well, if she didn't, who did? I don't know. Look, just stop looking at it, okay? Just don't look. Don't look. Okay, I think that mystery is solved. Kids, do you know the word sicko? <laughs> oh, oh, Fran, no. Oh, come on. All right, okay, it was a woman, all right? It was a woman. Her name is Mary, and... As a matter of fact, I am thankful. You know what I'm thankful? I'm thankful because her love has finally helped me to overcome a lifetime fear of rejection. Are you uh, happy? Yeah. Uh, that reminds me, someone named Mary called and said she's leaving you for another guy. <laughs> ah! Shut up! Ah! You shut up, too! Ah! <laughs> okay, now it's time for the Pilgrim Song. The pilgrims came to start a new life. They were kind of prissy and really uptight. Well, what's with those pilgrims? The Indians used to ask. They act like they got a big stick up their hats. Well, that's all the time we have. Fred, did Mary say where she was calling from? Uh, yeah, she said she's staying at the Suckered You Inn. Suckered You, okay, great. You bet. Well, that's all the time we have for today. So long, kids, from Uncle Fran. I'm a little ticked off. Sometimes he gets mad. <laughs> but always be your friend. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy. Gotta go. Bye. All right, stay with us. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. Sometimes I feel like he isn't even listening to me. There are times when I don't understand what she needs from me. If he just listened to me, I'd tell him what my needs are. I am listening, but she just doesn't make any sense. I don't make any sense. You're the one that tried to install the satellite dish yourself. There you go again, always criticizing. Nothing's ever good oh, enough. Oh, shut up! You shut up! <laughs> the Mystery of Love with Dr. John Gray. Hello, I am Dr. John Gray, and I wrote the best-selling breakthrough book that has helped eliminate the problems that exist between the sexes. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Now, you may also know me by my other book, Men Are Made of Cheese and Women Are Made of Crackers. But since <laughs> that one did not do too well, let's go back to the thought that the key to better relationships, better communication, and better lives is understanding the fact that men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Now, in a little bit, we'll be showing you my theory and practice with the help of Glenn and Anne. Uh, but first, let's take some questions from our audience members who are anxious to share my knowledge. Now, yes, you have a question? Uh, yeah. Uh, where did you say men were from again? <laughs> uh, men are from Mars. Okay. And, and where are women from? Women are from Venus. Oh, see, I had it backwards. I thought it was women who were from Mars and, and men who were from Venus. No, no, it's not. 
Uh, well, who's, uh, who's from Mercury? <laughs> Nobody's from Mercury. Okay, let, let, let's have the next question, please. Uh, yeah, I was reading about the discovery of life on Mars. And it looked like little squiggly things, and I've seen men who kind of look like that. So is that, what, is that what you mean by men are from Mars? No, uh, l listen, I think you're missing the point here. You know, you know, now would be a good time, I think, for you to see my philosophy in action. So, Glenn... I want you to tell Anne how you really feel about some aspect of your relationship. And remember, you're from Mars. Okay. Anne, I just wish you would support me more in my career. Now, see, now, th that sounds more like you're from Venus. Right? Now, say, say, it, <laughs> say it like a man would. But that's how I talk. All right, well, here, maybe if you try wearing this helmet, okay, just oh. put that on. Uh, okay. Now, it might make you feel like you're, you're from Mars, uh -huh. okay? Okay. Anne? I just wish you would support me more. No, look, th this isn't working. You're ruining my theory. Get off the stage. Okay. No, 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 no. You're, you're supposed to huh? challenge me, you know, like, like you would if you were from Mars. Okay. And no, I won't leave the stage. All right. <laughs> that, that does it. That's, that's even worse. Get out of here. Get out of here now. Okay. No, you're doing, you're doing it again. Huh? Now I've got to write a book titled... Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, except Glenn, who's also from Venus, even though he's a man. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, let, let, let's take another question out there. Yes? D did you think this up yourself, or did you get it from that Paul McCartney song, Venus and Mars? <laughs> no, I thought it myself. All right, N next question. Yes, I believe it's imperative that we act quickly with our brothers in Deep Space Nine to infect the Klingons with some rare space diseases. Okay, okay, excuse me. I believe you want the uh, Star Trek convention down the hall. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, y your question? You know, Venus sounds like Venus. Sh shouldn't men be from Venus? Okay. That, that, that's enough questions. That's enough questions from the audience. Now, <clears throat> Anne, why don't you tell me what your main relationship concern is? Yes. Um, how do I get the man I love to open up? Oh, okay, remember, where is a man from? Mars? That's right, so that means... I'm sorry, I, I really don't get this whole Mars okay. Venus thing. Ma Mars is the god of war, so that means... Look, why don't you just tell me how to get him to open up? So the man is a warrior. Oh, well, just tell me. And the warrior needs... Gosh, why don't you just drop all this Mars stuff and tell me what to do? Or is this just a bunch of crap and you really don't know what you're talking about? <laughs> Well, we are out of time, but to prove that I do know what I'm talking about, on next week's show, we'll discuss my new book about Anne and all other women like her. Quit your bitchin' and get Uranus in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll see you then. The Late Report. Well, Bill Gates plans to invite the leaders of the world's leading corporations to Seattle next spring for a technology summit and dinner party at his new Lake Washington home if it's completed by then. If not, Kid Valley. Yeah! In a recent survey, it was found that Reed College in Portland is the least religious of the nation's top colleges. <laughs> Among the nation's most religious schools, Washington State University during today's overtime. <laughs> Washington State Patrol officers have been accused of bringing a stripper to a birthday party at the Patrol Academy near Shelton. The officers are disputing the charges, saying that while she was a stripper and she did perform at the Academy, it wasn't really a birthday party. <laughs> Ticketmaster is planning to go public soon and sell stock that is worth over 32% of the company. The initial price for each share of stock will be around $22 plus a $10 non-refundable service charge. <laughs> KCTS 9 spent thousands of dollars to research and test a new name, only to find that their choice, VIA, 
was trademarked to somebody else. Channel 9 management immediately spent thousands more dollars on new research and have come up with a brand new name, McDonald's. <laughs> Pacific Lutheran University students who answered a sex survey did not know it was for Playboy magazine. Most, it turns out, didn't know they were taking a sex survey, and many, in fact, were not aware that they were Pacific Lutheran University students. <laughs> Seafirst Bank has begun offering customers the option of computer online banking. Initial response to the new service has been quite positive, although some people have been confused by the bank's inclusion of the naughty teller's chat room. <laughs> well, this week, billionaire Paul Allen gave King County a deadline of December 15th to make a decision on the Kingdom lease or he would back out of his offer to buy the Seahawks. Here with a comment is our own Nancy Guppy. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. You know, in recent weeks, the whole Seahawks stadium issue has turned into a big fiasco. Paul Allen is frustrated that there's been no deal to make improvements to the kingdom. And then last week, Montlake residents went ballistic over the idea of the Seahawks playing in Husky Stadium. And I have to agree, it's not a good, uh, good match. Why? Well, because it's illegal to drink in Husky Stadium, and can you imagine being at a Seahawk game without getting drunk? <laughs> I mean, you know, what would be the point? But, you know, I think I can offer a solution. You see, Paul Allen doesn't want to pay for a brand new kingdom, but he's very excited about paying for a brand new museum to honor Jimi Hendrix. So, why don't we just combine the two into the Jimi Hendrix Museum Stadium? Okay, it would be perfect. Okay, for starters, if you're going to have someone mangling the national anthem before each game, it might as well be Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> right? And football and heavy rock fans aren't all that different. That's right, they both share a common craving for nachos. Okay, and, and then there's the field. The team always prefers to play on real grass. Well, guess what? So did Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. massively bright grow lights hanging from the ceiling, there's no way you're going to miss a play. You know what I'm saying? Okay, of course, attendance is going to go up because all the kids will be saying, come on, Dad, hurry up. It's bong night at the museum stadium. <laughs> Plus, look at the design for the Hendrix Museum. See that? See, it'd be perfect for a football stadium because if the roof started to fall down, no one would be able to tell. Okay? And just think about the changes for the cheerleaders. Instead of being called seagulls, they'd be known as groupies and they'd have sex with all the players. <laughs> oh, wait, I guess that's the same as it is yeah, now. Yeah, it's been, yeah. It's been <laughs> Anyway, okay. anyway, the best thing about this whole idea is look how much cooler the helmets would be. Oh, there you there go. There you go. Yeah. 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 Right. So, so Paul, so Paul, if you're watching right now, yeah. we know you're rich, buddy. So, so, so be our friend and just do it. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Very nice helmets. Very nice. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Finally, the El Gaucho restaurant, which closed in the 80s, will get a new home on First Avenue soon with the philosophy, when people sin, they want to sin good. In fact, turns out that's the philosophy for all of First Avenue. This has been The Late Report. Stay with us, because we've got some funny stuff coming right up. is News Break with Steve Dennis Curley. Shuffle papers, pause, and look up. <laughs> Smiling eyes, nod head, glance down, and up. Cock head, <laughs> serious face, raise eyebrows, lower voice, Blab copy, set jaw, eyes down, <laughs> small silence, and shuffle papers. Head up, shoulders back, knowing smile, witty aside, turn to bimbo, canned repartee, toothy laugh. <laughs> Head turn 45 degrees and lock. Arm back on desk, hands together. Chin down, bedroom eyes, and out. This has been News Break with Steve 
Dennis Curley. Well, gosh. That's just about all the time we have this week for Almost Live. If you'd like to join us here in the studio audience, you can always call this number, 421-5555. You know, we always enjoy having lots of sophisticated, lovely, beautiful people like we have in the audience tonight. And this is going to be our Thanksgiving show, so we're thankful that you're watching us. Goodbye, and have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.